Hip-hop groups would make a huge impact in the 1990s. Hip-hop groups would bring a new type of energy and would heavily impact the culture on so many different levels. Hip-hop groups would show so much innovation and creativity. The value of having two or more verses from different perspectives on a rap record only added icing to the cake. On the East Coast, hip-hop groups really started to dominate. And there was one rap group repping in Southside, Queens, New York, that burst onto the scene with their raw, aggressive style and uncompromising lyrics. And they would push the word hardcore to the max. This group is called Onyx. When the group Onyx was originally formed, they actually called themselves Onyx Bionics. The group would later drop the Bionics and only use Onyx as their lead name. Now, there was also only three core members at this time. The founding members, which would be Fredro Starr and Big DS, because they were both best friends. And then Suave, a.k.a. Sonny Siza, or Sun C, would also be a part of the original core group. The group would start to record music with their producer and high school friend named B. Wiz. Now, B. Wiz was the only kid in their hood with a beat machine. B. Wiz had an SB12. The group hired B. Wiz's manager to start shopping around the group's demo. Onyx's approach to hip hop wasn't initially gritty and grimy out the gate. That style would come as time went on. They signed a single deal to Profile Records and released their first demo single in 1990 called Ah, and we do it like this. made ah we do it like this with b wiz that was our first record deal with, po with profile records and um that shit ain't really do nothing you know what i mean red alert was playing the record but he was playing an instrumental red alert the dj on the radio biggest dj on the radio was playing the instrumental but he never played the lyrics i would hear the beat come on dun, 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 but never played the lyrics that shit was, that shit was, and then I saw Red Alert, because we was, we was club kids. We was going to clubs like Powerhouse, you know, Latin Quarters. We was, we was there. So I saw Red Alert in front of the club at Powerhouse. It was at a, uh, Leaders of the New School. They had a show at the Powerhouse. It's called The Building, the Powerhouse. And, um, I saw Red Alert. I, I came up to him. I approached him. I was like, Yo. You playing this record by a group called Onyx, but you only playing the instrumental. Why you don't play the lyrics? He was like, yo, I like the beat. I just don't like the lyrics. I don't like the rhymes. And I was like, that shit was like, you might as well just shot me in my- This would be an early lesson on adversity, determination, and just wanting to reach a goal. Onyx knew that they wanted to be a rap group and they knew that they had to get better as well. So the group would continue to record music, but this time without their original producer, B. Wiz, because he unfortunately passed away, the group would find new production and then continue to record and then continue to make their way into the hip hop game. The group would run into a man that would change the course of their lives forever. And this man happened to be a part of the most iconic hip-hop group of all time, Run DMC. They were running to the legendary Jam Master J. So we bump into Jam Master J on a humble for Run DMC, the biggest rap group in the world. We bump into Jam Master J, you know what I'm saying, at Jones Beach. They had a freak nick. A freak nick is like when all the colleges... In the summertime, they go to Jones Beach. It was crazy. So it was time to leave. It was a traffic jam. I'm probably sure you heard the story already, but there was a traffic jam. And no cars were moving. 
No cars moving. So we saw Jay Master Jay. We was like, yo, there go Jay. Yo, could we smoke with you? He like, yeah, come smoke with us. Him and, him and his brother Marvin. So we go in the van with Jay and start smoking with Jay Master Jay from Run DMC. We in the van, crazy fly van. We in there, me, Big DS, and Sun C. We in the van with Jam Master J smoking fucking weed. Shit was crazy. After that, we hit it off, man. Like, Jam, he became my big brother. And this is before Jam Master J even had a record deal with Dev Jam, none of that. He was just a cool nigga, you know what I'm saying? So he was like, yo, you know, we told him we rap. He was like, yo, get your demos together. And then um, I'm working on getting a record label. I want to sign some groups, blah, 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 blah. blah. So we like, we, we like, damn. We even though Sticky Fingers wasn't in the group, he still hung around the crew. Sticky was Fredro Starr's cousin, and he moved out to Queens when he was around 14 years old. So the two became very, very close. They even worked at a local barber shop where they cut hair together. Sticky Fingers actually went by the name Tropical. That was his original MC name. He also was aspiring to be a rapper, just like everyone else in the crew. Now, now Fredro Starr knew how important it was to stay recording, working on their demo, just because Jam Master J was just only one phone call away. Now, as fate would have it, Sun C and Big DS was out in Connecticut on a mission. Now, this was Sticky's opportunity to actually get into the studio with his cousin and record some new music. Sticky Fingers would add his vocals to a song called Stick and Move, which would end up being on Onyx's debut album. Now, the key to this song is that this song sounded like nothing else that was on their demo that they recorded before. This was a complete 360 from anything that they were doing as far as lyrically, style-wise, and just tempo. This song would prove to be one of the the key ingredient to getting them a record deal. During this entire time, Onyx and Jam Master J still stayed in contact. And the main thing was that once Jam Master J got his record deal and his record label together, then he would want to see what Onyx had for him as far as a demo. So one day, Jam Master J picked up Fredro Star, and then Fredro Star started playing the demo that featured. 10 songs and one of them being Stick and Move. Now, Jam Master J went through all the songs and by the time he hit to the final song, which was Stick and Move, he was blown away and he was like, who is this other guy? This other guy happened to be Tropical, which would be Sticky Fingers. And at that point, Jam Master J said, this group is not happening without this guy because this guy is gonna be the key to the success of the group. Back in the days, Hollis and Southside was like a rivalry, you know what I'm saying? They used to fight each other, Southside against Hollis, you know what I'm saying? But we was from um, Southside, we met Jay, and he liked what we was kicking, so he put us down because we was from Queens, and we just representing some Queens shit, so it was just cool, you know what I'm saying? With Jam Master Jay, Run DMC, Russell Simmons, they've been supportive of us, you know what I'm saying? They, you know what I'm saying, they just like held us to, to, to where we are now, you know what I'm saying? As far as relationship, Jam Master J is cool, you know what I'm saying? But we keep everything in the business sense of mind, you know what I'm saying? Because he's our business label, so it's a business relationship, you know what I'm saying? But it's a love there too, you know what I'm saying? Like my man just said, Run DMC is the pioneers of rap, you know what I'm saying? They down with the king, and the king is God. And if you don't believe in God, you don't believe in yourself, because you are nothing but... Back the fuck up! Question, oh, no, 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 with you, what's your name? My name is Fredro Star, the villain, you know what I'm saying? Chillin'. Word up, man, and I'm Sunny Caesar, the money freezer, aka Suave, all day, baby. Hey, yo, this is Big DS from the ghetto, straight out of Queens, word up. Yo, this is DJ Shy Skills, nicknamed Hot Wheels. This is Sticky Finger, the fat pocket stinger, anything I touch, I take. Now the group was officially formed, now it's four members now adding Sticky Fingers. Now, initially, Sun C and Big DS weren't huge on adding Sticky Fingers just because now there's going to be four members. But with Jam Master J pushing for Sticky Fingers and also just the record deal being on the table with Sticky Fingers, the group had no choice but to add Sticky Fingers. But at the end of the day, Sticky Fingers would end up being the core key member of the group. 
that would really push the group to new heights. A lot of crazy nights in them studios, man. A lot of crazy nights. We was 19, 21 years old. And before we would go to the studio, we would go see my man Littles, right? My man Littles off Jamaica Avenue. And he had these things called mess tabs. Mess tabs is like, like some ill for real. So before the studio runs, my man Eat Em Up was driving a rodeo. We was working at the barbershop, making money. We had our own brand new cars, all that already. We was going to see my man Littles. Eat Em Up would drive. We go see Littles, go pick up a couple of Skittles. We was calling them Skittles. Take a few of them shits, and then we was like on a hundred. That shit was like putting a battery in a nigga back, for real. So you hear records like Throw Your Guns and Back the Fuck Up. Like niggas was fucking on one. Niggas was, we was, we was out of here. But we needed that. We needed to, we needed to go there. You know what I'm saying? Like we was looking at niggas like Jimi Hendrix. Like that was. Onyx's production on their debut album would star with Shy Skills, who would produce a huge bulk of the album, assisted by Jam Master J. And then Jam Master J also had a hip hop group called the Afros. And one of those members, Cool T, actually produced two songs off the album as well. Jam Master J would oversee the debut album from Onyx. Now, who better than having Jam Master J, one of the members of Run DMC, to oversee your projects? Now, one of the first songs they actually came up with and that was recorded was Throw Your Guns in the Air, which would end up being the initial single to Onyx's debut album. The Throw Your Gun single went crazy. It released in November of 1992. Now keep in mind, Onyx only signed a single deal at first with Def Jam. They wanted to test the waters just like Profile did in 1990 with their Ah and We Do It Like This. So this was Onyx's chance to prove that they can sell some records and really build up some some momentum um, once the album was finished. Check this out, man. We got to go ahead, go kick it, kick, kick. Throw your guns in the air and salute the hip hop. Know what I'm saying? If you're a real motherfucking hip hop like me and my crew, shit with this and throw your guns in the air and buck, buck like buck, buck, buck. The album was finally completed. All the blood, sweat, and tears, all the struggle it took to put this album together, it was finally done. Onyx was ready to put the Southside Jamaica Queens on the map. Last thing they needed to do was get the sign off and approval from Def Jam, just so the album can release in 1993. Now, Def Jam loved the album, but there was just one thing missing. They really needed a single to really Take the album over the top. Yo, it's crazy because there was almost no slam record on that album. That album, we brought that album to Dev Jam thinking that shit was finished. We had Throw Your Guns, Shifty, Nigga Bridge, we had all them joints, Fat, all that. We go to the office, we play the album, like, yeah, this is the shit, woo woo. And they feeling us, like, Def Jam was feeling niggas, like, niggas was loving throwing your guns. So we, we, we in the office and shit, cocky, you know. Mike Kaiser was like, yo, you ain't got no radio records. I, like, like, what I'm gonna do? I can't push throw your guns on the radio. Shifty is like, you know, it's not one of those choruses like that. To, you know, it started like radio, radio. So he was like, yo, I think y'all should go back in the studio and make another record, make a radio record. So we like, fuck, we felt like we wasn't cocky anymore. We felt defeated. We're not defeated, but we felt challenged. 
We felt challenged. So this is how Slam was created. We just sitting at home watching MTV and we saw Smells Like Teen Spirit video. Nirvana. We like, yo, look at this shit. Look at the fuck these white boys doing. Look at this. Look how much fun these niggas having. Why should these niggas have all this fucking fun? I was like, yo. We was like, yo, let's bring this, this vibe into hip hop. And then we came up with Slam. We, the, it was the vibe first. Slam was, we thought, we thought of the concept before we thought of the chorus. Then once we had the concept, it was easy, not easy, but we just used our knowledge and we took records like, Tramp! Tramp! See what I'm saying? That's just, it, you just gotta have knowledge to know that and put, it's almost like sampling. We kind of sampled their chorus and changed it to slam. Da, da, da. You, see what I, you see what I'm saying? But you gotta have knowledge of hip hop to, to create some shit like that. That's from being in the parks, you know, just seeing real DJs doing their thing. That's, that's where that's from. And that's how Slam was created. We had the concept and now we got a chorus melody. And then we put that shit together Shaw Skills came with the beat, which I didn't like. Shaw Skills had that beat. I was like, eh, I don't know if I even like that beat. That shit too happy. Niggas was like, that's what we need. We need some happy shit. So, yeah. Once he did that, it was, it was over. It was over. Once, once we brought Slam to Dev Jam, them niggas, them niggas put the house on us. They put all the money behind niggas. Word up. Because that record was... That was the biggest record of the year. I don't give a fuck about nothing. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. 93, that was the biggest record of 93. Wu-Tang and them niggas came 93, but... What makes Slam so special is if you think about it, Run DMC and Aerosmith got together and merged hip-hop and rock back in the 80s. And then the same formula would be huge in the 90s for Onyx. Slam was one of the biggest things that hip hop has ever seen because if you think about the West Coast definitely had the sound going for them in the early 90s. This sound really not only brought New York back, but it also transcended the culture because the mix of rock and rap is palatable with just about any audience. And this song really pushed the boundaries of hip hop because even to this day, Due to Onyx's slam, they're able to tour overseas. They've spent maybe 90% of their touring overseas just because of not only just slam, but their energy as well and all their classic albums. But this song still feeds them to this day. And that's how important it is when you bring originality, when you bring yourself, and when you definitely want to bring a new sound to hip hop, it's always going to be around forever. MTV played Slam so much. This song really blew up on MTV and also made its way to their most popular cartoon at that moment and show, Beavis and Butthead. Onyx would also record a remix to Slam with hardcore rock group Biohazard. To me, music is universal, you know what I'm saying? We don't hold nothing back from nobody. Because somebody like my music, they buy it, that's cool, you know what I'm saying? So we did something with Biohazard, which was the lowest epitome of, of the rock, you know what I'm saying? And I feel we the lowest epitome of rap. So we put that together and we came up with some grimy tracks, you know what I'm saying? Shaw Skills did the track for Judgment Night with Biohazard. It was a lot of guitars, a lot of alternative. We like slamming, they like thrashing, you know what I'm saying? So it's all one thing, you know what I'm saying? It's just that they white and we black, but we putting it in the middle and we just making the music gray, you know what I'm saying? Word up. Word, cause the music ain't, music ain't got no color. Word up. Through the first three singles, with Shifty being the third single, Onyx would garner a loyal fan base with their high energy performances 
and their hard hitting lyrics. Onyx's stage presence and just their unapologetic, unapologetic personalities really gave Onyx's hardcore fans something that they love and something that they never seen before in hip hop. Onyx will release their fourth and final single, The Next Niggas, off of their debut album. This song was very interesting because it kind of put a spin on um, relationships because in this in this point, in this song, they were talking about women cheating on men and then men finding out and just being sour about it. So this was a actually a great way to not only balance out the singles for the album, but just to show a different view of the group it's not always hardcore they do have other records that they can put out onyx would put their stamp on hip-hop would back the fuck up their debut album this album still was one of the best albums of all time and it really would put a time stamp on the era of hip-hop that we would consider the golden era because you can't get albums like this you can still get hardcore albums but just with the production the energy and then this style being so early in hip-hop anything that you get after that is just a rehash of what we saw before so salute to onyx being one of the best groups in hip-hop history and also having one of the best debuts ever as a hip-hop group who is this Word up, and we representing the mad face. No, no, Onyx is about the straight up anger, man, of a people. You know what I'm saying? It's about realism, and it's about representing and relatives and people. You know what I'm saying? That's why we got the blood on the X, the bloody X. It represents all the deaths of the youths of the peoples that was trying to survive in the USG. United States ghetto. The USG, where we come from. Onyx is the anger, the mad face. 